hip adductor or adductor muscle group. Um, all right, just for orientation, we're in the frontal plane. The axis is the anterior posterior axis at the hip joint and the muscles in an open chain bring the leg toward the midline, adding it back, ADD duction um, for the open chain movement. So let's look at these motions. So here we see the open chain hip adduction motion. And let's go through the muscles from kind of superficial to deep. So we have the pectineus, which is the most superficial muscle. It's on um, uh, the front part of the pelvis. So it's anterior to the hip joint. So if you have access to a skeleton, which you will in lab, but others, if you have access to a 3D pelvis, um, you can see it's anterior. So it's also going to be a hip flexor muscle. Then we have the adductor longus muscle, right? So if we have a longus, you can bet there will be a brevis and it's just a little bit deep to the pectineus, the longus. And we have the adductor brevis muscle, which is deep to the longus. Um, the neural innervations for all the muscles that adduct the hip is the obturator nerve. So again, you should be clumping kind of similar things together. And then we have the adductor magnus, which is a huge muscle with a hole in it. Uh, your sciatic nerve goes through here, um, femoral artery. So this is kind of a, a big muscle that has many, many functions. Um, but again, group what's similar on the first pass and then get into the, the details. Then we have the innermost uh, thigh muscle is the gracilis. And the, what's unique about the gracilis is it goes, it crosses the, I don't know why it's not letting me show you this. It crosses the knee joint as well as the hip joint. A little bit more detail on uh, things that are similar and different of these uh, adductor muscles, which are on the medial aspect of the thigh, commonly called the groin muscles. So let's look at them. Uh, the adductor muscles of the hip joint attach, attach to the pubis. So that's going to be anterior to the hip joint um, because the pelvis is kind of a bowl. Five muscles comprise this muscle group, and there are more similarities and differences. So it can be overwhelming, but just kind of like bin them in what's the same, which will make things easier. So all muscles adduct the hip joint because they're medial to the hip joint. They also medially rotate the hip joint, and they can flex the hip joint. That is except the adductor magnus, and the gracilis. All muscles are innervated by the obturator nerve. I have, except for the pectineus muscle, but a lot of times in certain resources, you will see the pectineus muscle innervated by the femoral nerve, so it, or, and the obturator nerve. So for simplicity, for all the adductors, if you say they're all innervated by the obturator nerve, that will get you 99% of the way there. Um, and again, as you, as you use your anatomy, all right. And then another similarity is that all muscles are one joint muscle, except the gracilis muscle, which crosses the knee joint. So the adductor magnus is the largest, the femoral nerve artery and vein go through the hole that I showed earlier in this large muscle main functions. A deduction, the syrup, superior portion of the muscle can flex and medial rotate, and the inferior portion of the muscle can extend and laterally rotate. So it's very similar to, say, the trapezius muscle or other large muscles that are like the deltoid, which also has like a flexor and extensor portion of it. The adductor brevis and adductor longus adduct the hip joint, they flex and they also medially rotate the hip.
pectineus is the most superficial of all the adductor muscle group because it's on the superior ramus of the pubis. Uh, its neural innervation is, uh, you can say it's obturator nerve. Some people say it's a femoral nerve, but for ease, um, simplicity at this point, I would just say all adductor muscles of the hip are innervated by the obturator nerve. Gracilis muscle, what's unique, it's a two joint muscle. It attaches on the inferior ramus of the pubis all the way down to the medial surface of the tibia. So it has functions at both the hip and the knee. At the hip, it adducts the hip and medially rotates. And it helps flex the knee because its attachment point is a little posterior on that medial surface of the tibia. All right, and some individual images of the five adductor uh, torque producing muscles. And again, we talk about them as having a movement that's adduction at the hip joint. And to be very technical, it, they create an adductor internal torque that moves the, the, or that can move the hip joint into adduction. So let's look at them. First is the adductor brevis, right? It uh, adducts the hip. It can also externally rotate just where it is uh, um, attaches on the posterior part of the femur can like rotate that whole limb externally. Again, if you can get your hands on a skeleton and maybe some TheraBand or some string, this is really important to kind of look at the line of pull and how these motions are created. Adductor longus is longer and is an adductor, obviously. You have the adductor magnus. Um, again, can go into external rotation of the hip, um, super long muscle uh, that goes along the linea aspera. Gracilis is the one that is a two joint muscle and it's posterior on this medial aspect of the tibia. So it uh, helps with knee flexion. It's also um, in this insertion called the pes um, anserinus or the pen pes anserine. You'll hear it pronounced different ways, but those three muscles are the sartorius, the gracilis, and the semitendinosus. And then finally, we see the pectineus, which is the most superficial on the ramus of the uh, pubis. Um, short muscle, but it is uh, an adductor and a hip flexor.